In today's video, I will show you how to do boot Ubuntu with Windows 11. This is the brand new easy guide and one of the safest ways to set up a do boot on any computer without risking data loss. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to remove Ubuntu safely from the do boot. So make sure to watch this video until the end to avoid any confusion. The only requirements of this video, you need Windows 11 or Windows 10 installed on your PC or laptop and 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable disk with Ubuntu, at least 30 GB of free space reserved from your existing drive. Now let's proceed with creating a free space for Ubuntu. Just go ahead and right click on the desktop and open terminal. Then type disk mgmt and press return to access the disk manager which displays all connected drives and their partitions. In my case, you can see that one drive is connected. Drive 0 has three partitions. The first one is the EFI partition where the Windows Boot Manager is present. The second one is the main Windows and the last one is the recovery partition. I'm going to choose the C drive to shrink the free space for Ubuntu. In your case, it might be D, E or F, whatever. Just choose any partition and right click on it. Then choose shrink volume and allocate a minimum of 30 GB or more for Ubuntu. You can type the value in megabytes. In my case, I'm going to allocate 150,000 megabytes. Then go ahead and click on shrink. Now this will create an unallocated free space. Next, open your web browser and visit the official Ubuntu website to download the latest version. Ubuntu comes in two variants, LTS and non-LTS. The LTS version is supported for five years and offers stable and reliable user experience. On the other hand, the non-LTS version is supported for 9 months and includes the latest kernel and newer desktop features which is great for modern hardware. So choose the version that best suits your requirements. Now for this video, I'm using Ubuntu non-LTS release. Then head over to the second link and download the Rufus. Once both files are downloaded, save them somewhere on your computer for easy navigation. Before installing Ubuntu, it's recommended to create a system restore point on your Windows computer. Go ahead and search for restore point in the start menu and open it. Now this tool allows you to take a snapshot of the current system state. If something goes wrong with the Ubuntu installation, you can use this backup to restore your system back to the normal state. If you are using Windows 11 Professional, disable BitLocker encryption before proceeding. BitLocker can interfere with Linux installations. For Windows 11 Home users, this feature is disabled, so you can skip this step. For more information about this, see the link in the description. It's time to create a bootable USB with Ubuntu. Go ahead and connect your USB stick to your computer. Now open Rufus. Then select the USB drive and import the Ubuntu ISO image. I'm going to choose the partition scheme as GPT as this laptop uses UV BIOS with the GPT partition scheme. Then go ahead and follow the prompts and accept to start creating a bootable USB with Ubuntu. This will take some time depending on the writing speed of your USB drive.
Once it's done, it's time to boot the system into BIOS using the keyboard shortcut based on your motherboard. Now first, turn off your PC. When the screen is completely black, turn it back on and press your BIOS shortcut repeatedly. Now mostly it could be F2, F9, Escape key or the Delete key. In my case, it's the Escape key to boot into the startup menu. Then pressing F10 to enter the BIOS menu. Then inside the BIOS settings, look for the boot options and enable USB boot. Then you can enable or disable secure boot. It's up to you. Ubuntu supports secure boot. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and disable this feature. Then change the UV boot order. Now make sure to set the USB flash drive as primary boot device. This way the computer will check for the USB device first for an operating system and boot from it. Once you have made these changes, save and exit from the BIOS. Now your system will boot into Ubuntu from the USB drive. If it fails to boot, use the UV boot menu to load the install media. Once your computer has booted into the Ubuntu live session, go ahead and connect to the internet using Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. Now go ahead and choose your system language and click continue. Then skip the accessibility settings. Then select a keyboard layout and click on next. Then choose to install Ubuntu. Select interactive installation. From the applications page, you can choose the default selection that installs essential applications and the extended selection includes more applications. I'm going to choose an extended selection, then click on next. Then tick both options to optimize your system by installing recommended drivers, then click next. Now select install Ubuntu alongside Windows 11, the first option that automatically finds the free space that we created earlier in Windows 11. Now go ahead and create a user account, select your time zone and click next. This is the summary of the installation. Click on install Ubuntu. This will take a few minutes, so sit back and please be patient. Once it's done, click on Restart. Upon restart, you will be prompted to remove the USB drive and press Enter. Now, by default, your system will boot into the Grub Boot Manager. From there, you can choose to boot into Windows 11 or Ubuntu. If you don't see the Grub Boot Manager and your system boots directly into Windows 11, just restart your computer. While it's restarting, press the BIOS key 
to enter the BIOS settings. In the BIOS, look for the boot options and select the OS boot manager under the UFI section. Then make GRUB as the default boot manager. Once you have made the changes, reboot your system. Now you should see the GRUB boot menu. Let's go ahead and boot into Ubuntu. Inside Ubuntu, open terminal and run this command to edit the grub configuration file. And change the default grub timeout to 30 seconds. If you don't see the Windows boot entry, make sure you uncomment this line. Once it's done, save the changes by pressing Ctrl plus O and exit with Ctrl plus X. Now go ahead and type this command to update the grub configuration. Then reboot your system. Now you can see the grub time limit has increased to 30 seconds and Windows boot entry is also showing. As a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Ubuntu and decide to uninstall it, reboot your system back to Windows 11, then open the command prompt and type this command to launch the disk manager. Here, Next to C drive, you can see a primary healthy partition of around 150 GB, which is related to Ubuntu. Just go ahead and remove this partition by right clicking and choose Delete Volume. Now you will see unallocated free space that you can use and expand Windows. Just go ahead and right click on the C drive and choose to extend the volume. Once that's done, we need to delete the Grub Boot Manager present inside the Windows EFI partition. Now go ahead and open Command Prompt as an administrator. Then type Disk Part and press Enter. The type list disk to display all the connected drives on your computer. In my case, I have only one drive connected. Fair Windows 11 and Ubuntu boot files are installed. I'm gonna go ahead and select this drive by typing this command. Then type list partition to list out all of the partitions on this drive. You might see three plus partitions. Look for the system partition or EFI partition. Now mostly it's the first partition. Just go ahead and select this partition by typing this command. Once it's selected, type assign letter is set to R to mount this partition temporarily. Now type exit to get out of the disk part. The type R colon and press enter. This will change the directory. Now here type dir and press enter to list the contents of that partition. Now change the directory into the EFI partition by typing this command. Now if I type dir and press enter, this will list the contents of the EFI folder. Here you can see both Ubuntu and Windows boot files. Don't touch the windows and boot folders. If we need to remove the Ubuntu folder, just go ahead and type this command and press enter. 
And that's it. Ubuntu has been successfully removed. Now restart your computer. It should boot your system directly into Windows 11 without any boot issues. If you see a blue screen, don't panic. Simply boot into BIOS and change the boot order to Windows Boot Manager. And that's how you properly set up a do boot on your Windows computer with Ubuntu. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or queries, do post them. Thank you so much for watching. This has been KS Kirayo. I will see you in the next one.